Hey guys, welcome to my tutorial on panel washing or pin washing. Uh, some people refer to this as panel lining, but I guess that would mean you'd be using a pen and lining that with the pen and then doing some sort of cleanup. So what we'll be doing here is looking at a few different options. So these are the pieces that I've applied a gloss coat to. Uh, so a nice smooth shiny finish. Uh, this is an acrylic, so the idea behind here being that if you have an acrylic base you'll use an oil based wash, whether that be in an enamel or an oil. Uh, the reason here is that just like oil and water, oil will float on top of the water and won't mix in. So what that means is that you have less chance of actually staining your, your beautiful painted surface. And the converse would be true if you were using uh, enamel paints for your base, you would use a acrylic based or water based wash. So I like using acrylic paints. Uh, for various reasons, so I'm going to use an oil-based wash. Um, you know, any oil-based product, you're going to need to use the appropriate fluids. So these are pretty heavy chemicals compared to just standard uh, water. You know, if you want to clean up an acrylic. So what we've got here is going from cheapest to most expensive. So we've got the you know run-of-the-mill Artist White Spirit. This is from Windsor Newton. Here you can see I paid something like three pounds on a sale, so I guess that normally is five pounds for a full liter of Artists White Spirit. I wouldn't even suggest going for the hardware store stuff. That stuff is just way too aggressive, smells terrible. Um, so definitely you want to look at something that's for artists. The next up, a little bit more expensive, uh, 125 mils. Uh, this probably also cost maybe five pounds or four pounds so not cheap but uh, this is Zippo so it's from the States I'm in the UK so that would account for the price I guess if you're in the U in the United States the stuff must be dirt cheap and available anywhere I could only get this from Amazon.co.uk uh, highly volatile in that it evaporates super quickly and that is actually quite useful when mixing that with enamels and I'll come to that in a bit and then the most expensive is the odorless turpentine from I think it's MIG products, uh, so this is the Abtalung range, uh, and that goes with their oils as well. Uh, really lovely stuff, doesn't have much of an odor to it as it's, the name suggests. Very expensive, um, you know, this was maybe eight pounds for, you know, 50 mils, sorry, 75 mils, so very expensive stuff, uh, but it is smooth. Um, you know, as you trace your cotton swab over your piece, uh, it doesn't have a sticky feel at all. You don't get stuck at all. Um, you know, just very gently removes, you know, any oil or enamel that you have without actually risking damaging the surface of the piece. So really nice stuff, uh, but I don't use this all the time because it's just so damn expensive. In terms of washes, I first tried doing an actual oil wash. So this is actually a modeling oil color from also uh, MIG products, the Abtalung Ab Ab range, so they're both 502, so these are compatible. Um, you know, some guys really raged on about how smooth the stuff are, was, uh, you know, really is lovely, it's oil, you know, really silky smooth in appearance, also when it goes on the piece, but this stuff just does not dry. Uh, you know, after applying it, I waited a few hours to see how we, how it worked, the stuff just came straight off and I actually prepared a container and this is a mixture of the engine oil here or the engine grease with the uh, odorless turpentine and this is from a year and a half ago uh, you know it's still exactly the same and I guess that's to be expected you know if you have a bottle of vegetable oil or sunflower oil in your kitchen that stuff doesn't dry uh, so I guess it's not too surprising that this is the same. When it's exposed to air, not much difference either. Some people say maybe a week to two weeks for it to dry, and that's in f it's in a really thin layer. Uh, you know, even then I found the stuff rubbing off. So I don't really understand how you're supposed to use this. It has some other difficulties, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, on the other hand, after I tried that, I moved over to using lighter fluid and just humbral enamels. Relatively cheap enamels, but achieves the look that I'm after. I always seem to mix a combination of these. I don't tend to use pure black unless it's a very dark part. Um, 
This here I also prepared around the same time. Uh, this actually dried within a day. You know, I thought I'd actually prepared a small volume that I thought oh, I could use in the future if I mixed it all up. You know, it, I achieved a color I was after. Uh, it just dried up straight away. So extremely volatile, evaporates so quickly, uh, you can't really store it. So you do want to just use a little tray to mix a small amount uh, and just use it for that single seat, you know, single session. Uh, what I did find though is that, you know, cleaning up with this liquid, it's um, it evaporates also so quickly that you know you pour some into a container, within a few minutes it's evaporated. So it wasn't so suitable for cleanup. Also quite aggressive. I did find that it would eat through my acrylic gloss coat if I wasn't careful, and that's why I actually decided to try my odorless turpentine, which I was saying was really smooth. And you know that worked wonders with the the uh, enamel wash. So once it dries up a little bit, you can use this guy to just tidy that up. Um, so smooth that it doesn't damage your your surface of your um, gloss coat. And then for cleanup, this is where this guy comes in. So when I want to clean up my brushes, clean up my pots, I use the Artist's White Spirit, um, just because it's low in odor, and it's a lot cheaper as well. Um, so, you know, definitely go for this for, for doing any sort of cleanup. So you can see yeah, I've had this now for, you know, a year and a half or two years. Um, I've hardly used any of it. You know, over 100 mils. Uh, so I would have cleared out if I was just using this. Um, so definitely a recommended product. Okay, let's get to it. So you just need a tiny amount. I mean, we're looking at, you know, 10, 20% oil. I mean, that's all you need, <laughs> you know, for a single wash session for, you know, maybe enough, as many as five or six pieces. Uh, you're looking at, you know, 10, 20% oil to 80% or so of your thinner. So you're really just creating a really dirty wash. You know, it kind of looks like just a dirty turpentine. So I'm just going to pour that in. This is like liquid gold here. Don't spill. And I'll use a brush just to stir that up. And it's quite a nice color, you know, for what you're trying to achieve if you're wanting to do literally like an engine spill coming out of an engine or something like that. This stuff looks amazing. Uh, but again, I don't know how you dry this stuff. So if you have any thoughts on how you dry oil quickly. You know, I know you could use a hairdryer. Um, that didn't seem to help me. Um, but yeah, I mean, look how lovely that looks. I mean, let me just get that to the camera. I mean, this is smooth. And we'll see if it does what I remember. So let me just dip that there. And I can take as long as I like because it's not actually going to evaporate. And I'm going to take this part here. So this is a part I prepared previously. And this seems like a bit of a waste having so much when I'm just going to do one part, but you can't get less than a drop out really. So the idea here is that you're supposed to have a nice smooth finish surface and use capillary action just to let that trickle down. Uh, I've never really had success with that so as you can see there's kind of gloop there um, and you can just kind of dab it along and that looks pretty good you know again the idea here is that uh, hopefully you can see it's quite difficult working with the camera um, but there you can see it's flowed in look it doesn't have to be perfect uh, the idea here is that you will do a bit of cleanup later so I'll just do the other side What some people do say is that if you take your thinner and you wet the part first, you'll have it run more more efficiently and use capillary action. So I guess I'll do that with my enamel part in a bit. But uh, there you have it. It's that easy. And I'll leave that alone for a bit. And we'll see what it looks like. So I'll just leave that there. Leave that horizontal so that it doesn't run down. Okay, so about 10 minutes have passed now, and I'm just coming to show you the the oil wash. Um, so initially, 
there was just a problem on the one side here where uh, you know it looked like it had run out of that corner but now turning around to the other side it's done exactly the same there as well so I don't know if you can see that but there is nothing in the corner which is exactly where you want it to be instead it has crept up the sides and along the other side there so you know like even here you can see how it's moved over that lip onto the surface there um, so yeah so this was the trouble I was having I, I found that I I kept on having to do you know maybe do a second or even a third attempt and even then you had very little uh, of the actual wash staying in the corners where you need it to stay. So I definitely recommend, you know, avoiding that altogether. It's a bit pointless. Um, some people must have had success in the past because I have seen people do this. But I don't know if maybe they don't thin it out or, you know, maybe they just, you know, slap it on as thick as they can and then leave it for a month. I'm not sure. Uh, but I don't have that kind of time. So I... You know, I'm not even going to show you cleaning this up because there's no point. Uh, it's still quite wet. You know, if I drag my finger there, you know, it just rubs off. So, um, you know, I don't really get that one. I'm going to now apply a enamel wash to the same part that I did an oil wash on before. So I've just cleaned that up. Um, very easy to clean. It never dried. So just to show that what it will look like with an enamel wash. So always mix a little bit of black and white. I've always found that you know, using pure black uh, just will look too stark and unnatural. It's also very unforgiving in terms of mistakes. Uh, if, if you do stain the surface for whatever reason, it will be very noticeable. I'll show you an example in a minute. So I've really got a little bit of white in there, just a splash of black. Just making sure I keep the lid closed. I do not want to be spilling this over. And then just a tiny little splash of my Zippo lighter fluid. So what you'll find is if it's too thin, uh, you'll actually see a lot of the uh, particles floating around and going up the side of the wall. Um, then you know that your mixture is too thin. You'll also find that the lighter fluid will kind of sit on top of the paint um, so yeah, this is looking to be quite a good consistency. Uh, I've also found, you know, the lighter you go, you can always go a bit darker. Uh, but this is quite a light grey. We're just wanting to bring out a little bit of that detail uh, for the panel lines, so definitely quite light. I think in my next build I might do something with a little bit of brown in it, just to suggest that it's dust or dirt that's kind of settled in there, uh, rather than just you know, bringing out detail for the sake of it. Um, there are a lot of arguments online as to why would you panel line and why would you do a pre-shade. So I do think you do need to make it as subtle as you can. The advantage just is, is that you do actually see a bit more detail that you otherwise wouldn't see. So I use... Sometimes I do have success with this. Uh, so there's just a little bit of plain Zippo lighter fluid. And the idea there is that I will just gently brush a little bit of that lighter fluid where I want the paint to flow. The idea here is that will it will encourage capillary action, which means that I will have less cleanup to do. Not always successful, but we'll give it a try. So just mix them onto the brush. Just want a really small amount. And just gonna dab that in there. And there you can see it flowing down. Let's see if there's enough on camera there. Maybe I'll just touch a little bit more at the top. There it goes. So it's kind of gotten a little stuck there. Oh no, there it goes. And I can just dab the tip there. There you go. So that's in the corner. Same again for the other side. And there it goes. So I have varying degrees of success with the capillary action. Sometimes it really doesn't flow at all. I don't know if that's because of the Humbrol paint that I'm using is quite gritty. 
Uh, so there it seems to be a bit stuck, so I'll try it from the other side. Come on. There you go. It's going very slowly. Hopefully those will join. So a bit of a mess there, but that's okay. So that'll clean up quite well. So that's just an example of applying the uh, paint with capillary action. Other times, you know, if you're not having any like, you can just slather it on and you can do a cleanup later. But obviously the more mess you make, the more cleanup you'll have to do. And that can be quite time consuming. Uh, but yeah, so I'll leave that for about 10 minutes. Uh, anything longer than that, and you'll find that you'll have a lot of trouble getting that off. Um, so yeah. I'll be back in a few. I'll just do another piece here. Just fill the corners in. You don't want to flood it because otherwise then it's just going to create a bit of a mess. It'll just flow too well and just kind of will flow everywhere. So just I think I'll do it from this side so that it runs down. There it goes. So obviously the thinner you make your paint, the easier it will run. Like there on that side there, it's really not running very well. So even here, it just depends. Sometimes you're lucky. I guess I'll let me just slather this one on and we'll just have a look at what is required. And that's about it. Maybe just do a little here. So again, you know, you could go a bit darker than this. It just depends on the look you're going for. Um, so I've gone quite light here, because also remember we're going to then spray, uh, you know, another coat of gloss coat after this. You know, once we've done the decals and things like that, we'll do another gloss coat and then another coat of um, maybe a matte finish or a satin finish, and that's all going to make it look a little bit darker. So it will ultimately look a little bit darker than this. So I wanted to show you what can happen if you're too impatient and don't let your gloss coat cure. So what happened here is I first made the choice of using pure black for a tutorial, and just to show you how that can actually look, it really doesn't look natural at all. It's definitely too stark and you know even if it were to imply engine grease or something like that that's still too dark uh, the other thing then is that it shows how unforgiving black is and also what will happen if you don't wait for the actual gloss coat to cure so what's happened there is is that it's actually gone through the gloss coat and you can actually see in several places it's kind of spattered all over the show there you can see a bit of the you know it looks just like a light gray coming through so by trying to then clean that off with a bit more force I actually then messed up the panel wash over here which means I'd have to do it again but this piece is unrecoverable in terms of fixing up you would need to completely strip it down again or you would need to you know hit it again with a couple of layers of paint uh, and then do your wash and all of that all over again so you might as well just strip it down so you know it looks really bad it's really kind of just stained all of the surfaces and this is what happens when you are impatient and don't wait for it to cure. So there you go, kind of worst case scenario. And uh, I'll show you the other piece in a minute, uh, what that looks like with the cleanup. In terms of cleanup, I could always use the Zippo lighter fluid. Uh, as I was mentioning, but again, this is very volatile stuff, evaporates very quickly, uh, quite aggressive. So I have found that it actually takes off too much of my paint or too much of the wash. The Artist Mineral Spirits, again quite heavy, and my favorite is the Odeless Turpentine again, and that's just because it is quite smooth and doesn't tend to strip off the paint and is very gentle on my gloss coat as well. So just a tiny amount, literally just tilting it forward, letting it pull back, and then kind of just mopping up what was left on the lip there. So using a really tiny amount, because uh, obviously I don't want to flood the part and then take off all the wash with it. So just very gently 
is taking off that edge there. So you can see it's just very slowly working it away. It takes a few few strokes. So it's gentle enough that I can even go with you know with the grain. Um, again, because it's not flooded with a solvent, it's not going to take any of it with it. So it won't clear out that corner. So there you go. That's probably as much as you want to clean it up. And then for the other side, same again. So this is about, you know, I let it dry for about 10 minutes or so. Leave it any longer and I would be really struggling here. As you can see, I'm having to do quite a few um, swipes. So maybe I'll add a little bit more. Again, this stuff also evaporates relatively quickly. Again, patience is the game. You don't want to flood it because what will just happen is you'll completely mess it up. And then you have to start all over again. Trust me, I've been there and I've just learned to just take it nice and easy. And then you just do it once. Just very gentle swipes. Hopefully you can see on the camera there. And that's about it. Job done. So quite easy. I'll do the other part here. This is the one that was really messed, you know, just kind of slathered on. So obviously that will take a bit more cleanup, but again, not too bad. Kind of going with the grain and also pulling it away. If you get your cotton swab stuck in that corner, you're just going to wipe it all off. See, so it comes off quite easily. So potentially in this one, I could have waited it for t to dry a little bit longer because it was a bit of a thicker coat on there. But as you can see here, I'm not staining the surface. You now waited a full 24 hours or so for this to dry, for the gloss coat to dry. And that's looking quite good. Again, because it's a light gray, it's quite forgiving. So I can still see I've actually have some left on the surface there. So, but because it's not black, you actually have to look for it. Whereas if it was black, uh, it would really be in your face and you'd you would have to clean that up thoroughly. So just going to use a little bit more now on the clean side, same as before, just ever so slightly, you know, wetting. Oh, I've actually gone and wetted that too much now. So that's way too wet. I'm gonna have to dry that off on there. You can see how wet that is. If I went and hit the surface of my piece with that now, it would just mess up my enamel job. And there you go. So even though this piece was, the second piece there was really slathered up uh, with enamel, uh, it cleaned up pretty well and definitely was made easier by using the gloss coat. Uh, if you were using something with a slightly matte finish, uh, the part ends up being stained. If I just turn this around to show you the one that I did the other day, again here, you know, that surface has been stained um, more difficult to clean off and uh, you know again just being black doesn't look particularly natural as far as I'm concerned it looks quite gunky kind of looks like a messed up uh, panel lining with a Gundam marker um, so definitely a lot easier to use grey 
So again, I could go a bit thinner. You know, if you look there, looking a little heavy. So, I mean, this is not too wet, so I'm not going to attempt fade, but I could just very gently just streak in there just to get a little bit more of the enamel out, just to make that look a little bit less obvious. Because the aim we're trying to get here is just that when you're looking at it from a distance that you can actually see the panel lines. We don't want this massive thick coating. Okay guys, well thanks for watching. Uh, that's the end of this particular tutorial, so obviously once you've done the panel washers you would then go and do your um, decals. I always like to do my decals after I've done the panel wash. The problem with the decals is that you could actually get some enamel caught around the edges and you then can actually see the sticker. Um, and then once the, once the decal's on, that's when you'd hit it with another gloss coat and that would be the end result. Okay, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment below. Uh, otherwise, stick around for my next video.